All right, buenos dias, mis amigos, uh, y uh, señores y señoritas. Hoy, juicio de Dios, the judgment of God. Uh, there's a comment here from uh, Rick Lamb yesterday, and I kind of want to sort of hammer this home. So there's no doubt, you know, it's an interesting, to me, it's interesting. It really is. Uh, when is the judgment of God all right so to read uh, Rick's comment here he says it's talking about all who are saved and take part in the first resurrection and reign with Christ a thousand years which means that if you resurrected when the final judgment comes you need have no fear of God's judgment the second death the killing of your spirit by being part of the last resurrection you are eternally sealed to God and are free from all condemnation you're in God's family forever okay so here's the problem with that you're still trying to fit what you saw in a Hollywood movie starring Nicolas Cage and trying to fit that into the Bible and it doesn't work I, I look I get it you know this is what 99.9% .9 of the preachers are preaching today but it's not what the Bible says. And let me make it easy for you to see this. All right, what, you know, it's going to take time. I get it. Because it's it's the worldview that people have. You know, they're, they're the people that are believing that they are super monkeys. It's hard for them to get out of that worldview. And to see that, no, they're not created in the image of a monkey. Instead, they are created in the image of of God it's hard to break out of that worldview but I'm gonna show it to you and then uh, I just trust the Spirit of God that if you are led if you allow the Spirit of God to lead you you're gonna see it all right so uh, to criticize the comment here I would first have to say that well what you're saying Rick Lamb 772 is that Jesus Christ is not the first resurrection and that's what you're saying. I mean, just be honest and, and admit that that's what you believe, that Jesus Christ is not the first resurrection. And of course, if Jesus is not the first resurrection, then what? You're the first resurrection? Uh, good luck with that, buddy. All right, that's all I can say, right? Uh, no, the, the Bible is, is quite clear. And I, I showed it, and I, I showed it every day, but I showed it in that video particularly that Jesus is the first resurrection he is really the only resurrection he has led the way and we follow him and when he comes in the clouds of heaven we will go from death to life and be risen up in the air to meet the Lord and then our enemy is gathered at our feet and destroyed forever and then we are set back down on the earth with a new heaven and a new earth it's pretty simple now I get it everybody you know a lot of these so-called experts and scholars they got these charts and all they do is serve to confuse people because they themselves are confused. Really, that's what it comes down to. They're not intentionally lying, knowing the truth, and then selling a lie. They themselves have been lied to, and they believe the lie. They watched, in other words, they watched the same movie that you watched. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm being serious about that. I really am. Um. But I'm going to go over all the verses. I, well, not all the verses. I, I got ten of them lined up here. I want to make this easy so I don't have to stumble through them. But there's one here I want to start off with. You remember when Jesus was on the cross? He was on the cross with two other people. And the one guy was making fun of him. And, and the other guy says, oh, you know, what's up, man? You, you're right here in the same judgment that he's in. You know, you're right there in the same spot that he's in. All right, and so, uh, you know, one of the manifest, uh, I'm sorry, one of the malefactors, am I saying that right? One of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God? 
seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And so the easy explanation, I don't know why anybody would ever fumble over this verse, but the easy explanation is that this gentleman on the cross that is saved, he's going to die that day. And then he's going to, the next thing he's going to know is the judgment day. All right. And then when Jesus says, you will be with me this day, that means he's going to be saved. That means when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, he will be lifted up, resurrected from the grave. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. All right, so, <laughs> it, to me, it's so obvious, right? But it, it takes a while to break yourself out of that worldview that other men have taught you, not the Bible, the God has not taught you this, that this idea of, uh, multiple judgments, multiple ends of the worlds, multiple resurrections, that doesn't come from God. That comes from other men. So it takes a while to break yourself out of that mold. The same thing with this idea that you are a super monkey evolving into a green little Martian same thing it really is it's tough to break out of it I get it but let the spirit of truth guide you and he will <clears throat> all right so um so okay let's just get into this right where are we at right here that so this is a great verse right today thou shalt be with me in paradise um, because you think, well, what this guy do, right? What I mean, he's on, he's nailed to a cross, just like Jesus. He didn't do anything. And he couldn't do anything. But Jesus saved him anyway. Why? Because it's not of our works, but it's by the works that was done for us. See, Jesus has done it all. We can put our rest, we can put our hope, we can put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because He has done it all for us. For by grace are you saved through faith. Right? Have you ever heard the song, Amazing Grace? How sweet the sound that saves the wretch like me you know it's a grace i can't sing i apologize for that all right so in first peter oops first peter chapter 4 verse 7 uh it talks about but the end of all things is at hand i don't know where i'm going with this here um let me read let me read the context here I forget already who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead All right, the quick being the spirit the life and the dead okay the living and the dead is the living and the dead I'm sorry for this for for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of 
sins, use hospitality one to another without grudging. Now that's great advice, you know, even for, you know, especially for me, for everybody, right? And it's like uh, with this, to give an example with this gentleman here, I disagree wholly with this idea that Jesus is not the first resurrection, that he died in vain. I, I disagree with that wholly. It doesn't mean I have ill feelings toward Rick Lamb. I mean, we can disagree and not want to kill one another, right? That's not going to accomplish nothing. I want, I want to show Rick the truth. I want him to see what I'm seeing and to realize that Jesus didn't die in vain that his death is a big big deal it's as big a deal as the creation of the world itself it's as big a deal as anything that's ever happened when Jesus laid down his life I mean really without that nothing else matters right okay so 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verse 5, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise of God. Now, the, again, this is another example of when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven, this is the judgment of God. Make no mistake about it. There's only that judgment. That's the end of the world. That's you know you go back to Hebrews nine. It is appointed unto it is um, appointed unto men once to die, and then after this the judgment. All right, this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Make no mistake about it. All right, so when the Lord comes, that's the judgment of God. That's when the, everybody is risen out of their grave. All right, so let's go to Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is not multiple resurrections. This is not multiple ends of the world. This is not multiple judgments of God. It's one. It's coming at the last day, at the end of the world. All right, and that's important to understand. And, and you know, this is a question that uh, that where am I here? This is a question that Jesus was asked specifically, right? When in Matthew twenty-four, Mark thirteen, Luke twenty-one, the, the disciples wanted to know, just like we want to know. What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? I mean, that's a great question. Because we want to know. And then Jesus lays it out plainly. And people still don't get it. It's incredible. But this, this fits with everything that we're reading all throughout the Bible. How the veil is upon their heart. How they have eyes and see not. They have ears and hear not. Until they turn to the Lord and be converted then shall they be able to see, and then shall they be able to hear, and then shall they be able to understand. Right? It's amazing uh, how true that is, and how, uh, you know, how we can see it, man. We can see this happening, probably more so now than ever before, because there are so many that are blind today. There are more blind today than ever before, and it's only getting worse. So anyways... Matthew 24, um, when Jesus talks about the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This is the end of the world. It's judgment day. It's judgment day, and everybody is going to know it, and there's not going to be any doubt about it whatsoever. Everybody's going to know deep down in their soul. They're going to know it's the end of the world. All right, here in verse 30 it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That's Jesus. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. 
deep down in their soul, they know it's the end of the world. The end of the world. It's the end of the world. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. With power and great glory. He has come to execute judgment upon the earth. It's judgment day. It's the end of the world. At, when he comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up in the air to meet the Lord in the air. Right here it says in verse 31, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, signifying the end of the world. And they shall gather together his elect. All right, that's when we are lifted up in the air. First the dead in Christ, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is when we're transformed in, from our corruptible bodies into our incorruptible bodies. We are transformed into our glorified bodies. All right, and I wanted to get into that today. I forgot about that and just remember just now. So when we're... Um, when we're changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, it, we are we are changed into a new body. We're not angels. Angels don't have uh, flesh and bones. And I wanted to get into that. That's such an interesting topic. But I it's, this is more important. Rick is more important. So let's continue. All right. So we can go to uh, Revelation one. And um, right here in verse 7, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Everybody's going to see him. There's not going to be anybody that's not going to, Oh, what's going on, fellas? Everybody's going to know. Everybody's going to know. And they also, which pierced them. That means even the dead, right? The, both the dead and the living are going to see him. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. All kindreds of the earth shall well because deep down in their soul they know it's the end of the world. God has made us to know these things instinctively. Without a doubt, we're going to know when it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. And there's time no more. The time to be saved is today. If you put it off another day, it might be too late. So, you know, not only, you know, if you're not saved, buddy, you better really seriously sit down, be honest with yourself, and think about it. But then also, there's the aspect, well, hey, you are saved. You know, you know, a lot of people out there that are not saved. And so the, today is the day. This is the opportunity we have today to preach the gospel. All right. To those, every opportunity that we have. To those around us. At any given opportunity. Just a word. Just plant the seed. Just a little bitty seed. And it might grow in somebody. Okay. All right. So this is clear. This is, this is crystal clear, right? This is uh, supporting what we just read here in Matthew 24. All the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming. This is at the end of the world. Behold, he comes with clouds. This is the end of the world, and every eye shall see him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail. Everybody's going to know beyond a shadow of doubt that the Lord Jesus Christ has come. All right, so let's go here to Joel chapter 3, verse 15. All right, and um, here in, here, I'm not sure how to do this here. But in verse 15, it says, The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. This is parallel with what we read in Matthew 24. Verse 29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. It's parallel with what we're reading there. right? And the sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. In context here, Joel chapter 3 is talking about the judgment of God. 
the last day, the end of the world. All right, maybe I should read it just then. Um, oh, let's see. I don't know, I'm not sure where to start here. Uh, we can just start here. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Je Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down. For the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. Right, this is clearly a prophecy of the end time. All right, it's really easy to understand it if you just connect the dots, right? All right, so, oh, okay. So I want to um, go to Matthew 10 here real quickly and sort of draw a parallel, if you will. Oh, not Matthew 10. What am I looking for? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to draw a parallel to what we just read. can't believe I don't remember. Matthew 13, you big dummy. Gee, I can't remember nothing. I'm getting, I'm getting old. Oh, I'm an old man now. So, stands the reason that I forget stuff. Okay, so, in Joel, chapter 3, we... Oh, I didn't just do that. In Joel, chapter 3, we, it talks about the harvest and that sort of stuff. Yeah, an old man losing his mind here. Hold on a second, Paris. All right, so in Je in uh, Joel chapter three. All right, so we just read about you know put ye in the sickle for the harvest is right. Go to Matthew thirteen, if I can find it. Matthew thirteen, here uh, it talks about let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares and bind them into bundles to burn but gather the wheat into my barn the harvest is the end of the world all right so again this is talking about the harvest for the harvest is ripe when the harvest is ripe then comes the you know the, the farmer comes and and he harvests his crop so also when uh, the harvest is ripe here at the end of the world. The reapers are the angels, right? So the angels go out to gather together the elect, right? And so what do we see here? And they shall gather together his elect. You see, this is consistent all throughout the Bible. We're essentially being told the same thing, that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. It's judgment day. It's the great day of the Lord. There is no more second end of the world. There is no more. There is no second judgment of God. There is no second resurrection. There's. It's. That's it. It's the end of the world. And what does it mean when it's the end of the world? Well, it means it's the end of the world. It's the same thing to me when you talk about people. Uh, people that uh, are against 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're against the idea of being saved forever and having everlasting life. And so, um, logically, right, if you have everlasting life, you have life that lasts forever. That can, ne be never be t that can never be taken away. It's illogical to say that you have everlasting life and then lose it. Yeah, if you lose it after 10 days, then it, it was never everlasting life. It was something else, a temporary life. It wasn't everlasting life. Same thing here. When it's the end of the world, it's not only kind of the end of the world. It's the, uh, it's the end of the world until it's the end of the world that happens later. That's It's illogical. When it's the end, that means it's the end of the world. It's the end of this world, right? And it's, of course, the beginning of of a brand new world an everlasting world a world without any wickedness without any iniquity without any sorrow without any crying without any pain without any death and behold jesus says i make all things new all right so when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of this world, and then when we are all set back down on the ground, on the new heaven and a new earth, then everything is going to be new. No more death, no more pain, no more crying, no more sorrow. Behold, I make all things new. All right. So let's keep going here. The harvest is the end of the world, just like what we read here in Joel, talking about the harvest. Man, the harvest is ripe. So when the harvest is ripe, the angels come, right? Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And, you know, it, we're getting close to um, harvest time here in Iowa. And it's a beautiful thing. It really is. Because you see how tall the crops are. It's incredible. And then, you know, you see these farmers. They'll be out there night and day mowing down the the fields it's beautiful all right now where are we here I already I already talked about that one all right so in Matthew 12 I don't recall talking about this one but let's get into it all right so let's start here oh generation of vipers how can ye being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things but i say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account therefore in the day of judgment now, when is the day of judgment? Well, we're reading about this all throughout the Bible, consistently, over and over and over. I could have won a lot more than ten, uh, <clears throat> really. And uh, it, it's really it's consistent. It's overwhelming. There shouldn't be any doubt about it. The end of the world is the judgment of God. It is the great day of the Lord, and this is when every man will give an account. And the only ones that will be saved are those who are God's people. All right. Blessed is he whom the Lord will not impute sin. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, we're all guilty. But because Jesus is pure, he has made us pure. And therefore, on Judgment Day, we will be changed, transformed into our glorified bodies, into our immortal bodies, into our incorruptible bodies. All right. That's the only way for anybody to get saved, just by Jesus Christ. All right. And so, you know, keep <laughs> think about that. Every idle word, you'll have to make an account. If you're not saved, buddy, you're in big trouble. And if you are saved, think about think about what this means to you. You know, don't you want to be pure and righteous with God? 
Then why think ye evil things, like the heathen do, like the unsaved do? Why be a part of them when you're not a part of them? Right? So, strive to be perfect and faultless before God. All right? Now, here in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to, he, to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Okay, so the judgment seat of Christ is obviously when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It is the great day of the Lord. It's not, I mean, come on, man. You don't have the end of the world and no judgment? Then why is it in, why is it the end of the world? Right? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, if it's not the end of the world, why are everybody wailing and mourning? Why are people's hearts failing them for fear? If it's not the end of the world, if it's not the judgment of, of God. And it, if it's not, I mean, the judgment seat of Christ, you, look, where are we at here? Let's go to, not that one. Let's go to this one. All right, no, not that one. Where are we at here? Now, God the Father has given all authority to the Son. Uh, if I can find it. I can't find it. All right, there it is. Okay. John 3, verse 35. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into His hand. All right. For as the Father has life in Himself, so has He given to the Son to have life in Himself. And so, the verse that I wanted to share, I'm not sure this is it. I don't remember. I'm getting old. But, it's, like, the Father has given the Son all authority. And, so, when He executes uh, His, uh, you know, when he executes his kingdom, then shall uh, everything be delivered up to God. All right. All right. So, where are we at here? So here on the judgment seat of Christ, it you know this is not the first of two judgments. <laughs> it's. It's the end of the world. It's the judgment of God. The judgment seat of Christ is the judgment of God. It's not two. To, there's not two gods. There's one God. One judgment. One end of the world. One resurrection. All right. And the, the one resurrection is Jesus Christ, who has resurrected, ascended to heaven, and we we're going to follow Him. He's already led the way. You think of it as one event. It, it maybe it'll be more clear to you. Jesus resurrected and we're following him. Just, you know, we're a little bit behind him, of course. But he's the only resurrection. And when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. It is judgment day. There shouldn't be any doubt about this. And I already shared this verse. It is appointed unto men once to die. After this, the judgment. So, when people die, they will be awakened on judgment day and that is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven there is no other time there is no other judgment day the scripture is overwhelmingly clear on this you know when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven they are awakened and it is judgment it it's not I mean what are you thinking the zombie, you're gonna, people are going to rise up out of their graves and walk around for a thousand years? Man, that's you got that from watching too many zombie movies. That's not in the Bible. You're confusing zombie movies with the Bible. I'm serious about that. In Romans chapter 14, 
and talking about judgment so why does thou judge thy brother or why does thou set it not thy brother for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ for it is written as I live saith the Lord every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God every eye or I'm sorry every knee shall bow every knee shall bow bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God now this only happens one time at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven he'll come in the clouds and he'll purify the earth and there will be a new earth and when there's a new earth then we are set down and only the pure will be set down on the new earth and you're only pure if you are born of God. You're only pure if you're Christ. It's the only way. And so when this happens, there's no thousand year period of, of goodness and <laughs> well what it doesn't make any sense. Jesus reigns for a thousand years after all the evil has been done away with? Well, then what? Then he stops reigning? What, what in the world are you teaching? What, you're going to take over? you kick Jesus out of his seat? you know, proclaim to, 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 uh, to God and everybody that now you're God? I mean, what kind of, what kind of doctrine are you teaching, man? It's insanity. I get it. It's 99.9% .9 of the preachers, pastors, reverends, um, you know, all those people. They're just, it's, un it's incredible. <clears throat> it really is. It's amazing. It's unbelievable, really. All these people who pretend to be experts and scholars are teaching things that are not in the Bible. They're teaching things that they saw in a Hollywood movie as though it were the Word of God and <laughs> you know what's really incredible about all that is that that's exactly what Jesus said would happen and when he's asked about the end of the world he's not talking about oh watch out for you know asteroids hemorrhoids or earthquakes or you know Islamic terrorist, you know, or uh, you know, don't watch out for the COVID. No, that, he doesn't. He doesn't. He's not talking about any of that, man. He's talking about deceivers. People are going to be deceiving. Many shall come in my name, saying, "I, Jesus, am Christ," and shall deceive many. Forget about what you saw in those Hollywood movies. I know they got a great big influence over you and the way you think and your worldview and all that. I want you to come out of that worldview and just trust what the Word of God says. Read the Bible for yourselves. The key to all this is faith. You have to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God. Without that faith, man, you're not going to understand. I don't know how you can understand anything if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God. That's the key to understanding, is faith. Remember those verses that I shared with you earlier? Eyes that see. Oops eyes that see not ears that hear not nevertheless when it shut they shall turn to the Lord all right here in Isaiah 6 make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their ears or shut their eyes I'm sorry shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. 
uh, and then we have we have another uh, we have another um, you know parallel or or a, a quote from that verse in Matthew for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them this is talking about faith turning to the Lord is having faith in the Lord God Almighty that is the Word of God in heaven and the Word of God on earth. You believe that God can resurrect you from the dead, but you don't believe God can speak your language? What kind of God is that? There's nothing impossible for God. And you should already know, if you know the Bible, that the Word of God transcends through all languages for all time forever and ever. It's not stuck in a dead language. Even Paul himself says, where there are tongues, they shall cease. And of course, um, uh, many you know, you know examples of that as well. Let's go to Zephaniah 3, talking about the end of the world and the beginning of the new world. Right. Um, let me highlight this real quickly here. All right, another prophecy of the end of the world. All right, and then and the life to come hereafter. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve Him with one consent. The Word of God transcends all languages for all time, forever and ever. And there's coming uh, a point after the, you know this world is ended, then will we have a pure language. It won't be Hebrew. It won't be Greek. It won't be Chinese. It won't be English. It won't be Australian. It won't be Irish. It'll be a new language, a pure language. All right. I'm not sure some of them might not have been not might not be languages, but you get the point, right? There's going to be one language. You just like in the days before God confounded the language. All right? And this was the case before the flood when the whole world spake one language and it was of one speech. This was not a perfect language. Um, but the language that we will be given in the future will be a pure language. There's no indication that this language was pure. I mean, if they're full of wickedness, then you know you can make an argument that the language itself wasn't pure, wasn't pure, pure. But the language that will be coming will be pure, pure. All right. So, anyways, that's all I got for today. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, uh, please do share because I really enjoy. Um, your thoughts, you know, especially I guess if you disagree with something that I'm teaching. It's amazing to me that I'll spend an hour a day every single day and then I get a comment like this and I don't want to be snooty and say, well didn't you watch my video? Because you know, I'm not tired of talking about this. I'll talk about it every day. I'll talk about it again tomorrow. I want people to learn. I want people to know. Hey, the, the truth is there, right there in the Bible. And the, there are so many deceivers and liars out there, it's, it's incredible. And so typically what I'll do is I'll show you an example. I'll like go, hey, let's go here. Let's, t let's look at this liar and see what this liar has to say. And then I'll you know, play a few seconds or a minute or two. And I'll say, okay, that, well, that's wrong. And so let me show you why that's wrong. All right, so I, I, this is a new lady here. To me, visions and dreams of the end and millennial reign of Jesus. Well, the title alone right there is evidence that she's wrong, delusional, and a liar. Because Jesus doesn't reign a thousand years. He reigns forever. Luke chapter 1 verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. What in the world is going on here? Is this uh, 
somebody <laughs> is my internet broke or something uh, this is a joke here uh, well who would waste their time making a thousand different channels and posting this crap well anyways anybody familiar <laughs> Wow. Okay. Anybody familiar with uh, with my videos? Uh, they you've seen me do this uh, numerous times. Um. You know, uh, just you know, let's you know, let's listen to this guy and see he's wrong. <laughs> he's another one that's wrong. Let's listen to these guys and they're wrong. It only takes a minute or two to see the error that these guys are teaching, and it's clear what the Bible teaches, but. When you've got a corrupt worldview, in other words, when you've watched too many Nicolas Cage movies, uh, it's going to be hard to overcome that worldview because your challenge now is: is Nicolas Cage right or is the Bible right? And because you've believed Nicolas Cage, it's hard to overcome that because it's been indoctrinated in you, it's been ingrained in you, you've been brainwashed, it's hard to overcome that. It's easier to deceive people than it is to convince them that they've been deceived. And it's so amazing because Jesus says very plainly, very clearly, he's not, he's not deceiving you, he's trying to, conv he's trying to tell you that you've been deceived that people are being deceived and I mean, we get this all throughout the Bible this is the sign of the end time right, all right I'm gonna end it on this right here I wanted to go about five minutes I think I went a little bit I went a little bit longer than that but 2nd Timothy chapter 3 verse 13 but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse it's growing and getting worse and worse and worse and Luke chapter 18 excuse me Luke chapter 18 think about this you know how when um the flood came and only eight souls were saved there had to have been billions and billions and billions of people alive on the earth when that day came and in the days of, of uh, a lot in, in the uh, in the days of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah if you will in the cities round about there had to have been millions and millions and millions of people in those cities and there wasn't even ten righteous you know, compare that to like New York City, if you will, and imagine: Are there even ten righteous in that city? And imagine, um, you know, God destroying the, the whole area with fire and brimstone. All right. Now, fast forward to the end of the world, and think of the fire and brimstone that's coming upon the whole world. And upon the whole world are there even ten righteous. Now here in Luke 18 it says, you know, Consider or hear what the unjust judge says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, Which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? That's an incredible question to ask. When you consider only eight souls were saved in the days of Noah, there weren't even ten righteous in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so also at the end of the world, to just ask that question. It's something to think about. And also knowing in Matthew 24. 
in Matthew 24 it says except except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened in other words if God allowed things to continue as they are there will come a point where there's nobody saved now how close are we to that point are you saved you know the question I need to ask myself am I saved is it possible I'm the only one is it possible that there are liars and liars and liars all around me I don't know you know I can't tell who's saved I don't I I, I, I know I'm saved but beyond that I, I don't know anybody for sure that is saved I don't know for sure if anybody is saved I can't know only God can know so take heed take heed take heed that no man deceive you adios